going on guys coming back at you with part four i think of what i think about automotive manufacturers today i'm going to be talking about porsche and mclaren and i think these two companies have very similar looks on progression even though porsche has been doing it longer than mclaren has obviously but i think mclaren is trying to replicate the route that um porsche has been going through throughout the years and i think it's very interesting Firstly, we're going to talk about mclaren so mclaren came onto the scene with the uh manufacturer car scene in 92 to 98 with the mclaren lap one to set uh the top speed record for a manufacturer car absolutely crazy speeds and we didn't see them for another 12 12 14 years until they came back with the 12c in 2010 2011 yeah 2011 they made that car from 2011 2014 that was their first really production car other than the f1 which they only made 100 units and now they're really starting to pump out models with the 650s which is probably going to be called the 720s revamped pretty soon next year um and then the 570 the 570 gt the 540c out in european countries and dubai and stuff like that and the other special edition models that they're coming out with and the similarities that i think i'm seeing with porsche is the style it's stylistic cues and you know the power units so all the mclaren models have the same front end basically i mean subtle changes subtle differences not as much as porsche <laughs> i think but they're going the same route they're differentiating the body styles a little bit um more than Porsche in some areas. I mean, they only have a few production models going on right now, unlike Porsche has several. Um, they are definitely like coming into their own and really setting a standard. I mean, with the five, um, 570S, I mean, that car is absolutely incredible, especially for the price, like just under $200,000. I mean, or just above two hundred thousand dollars, it is an absolutely incredible deal. Like mid five hundred horsepower, twin turbo V eight, and the interior is just incredible. I mean, you can ask for more. I mean, it's a ton of horsepower, and you have the incredible doors that go up. I mean, this car. I mean, the cars that McLaren are making are just incredible. Even from the 12C, I mean, the 12C had its issues, but it was their first, like, actual production car. I mean, McLaren has grown so much from, 2000, <laughs> from 2011. I mean, what was that, six years? And they're just really, really making a name for themselves. I mean, aside from Formula One, where they've always been, I mean the um the the production car market has been incredible for them i mean they don't make a ton of money from the automotive world i mean i think you heard from alejandro's videos they make a ton of their actual revenue from mclaren technologies their technologies the way they um handle businesses like i think he said that they made a company an extra 100 million dollars from like making a process 30 seconds faster or something like that absolutely incredible the way they do things and you know it's really nice to see them developing as an automotive manufacturer um, i mean i'm not sure what your guys's opinions are on the company but you know we'll see in 10 years where they are but right now they're they're doing pretty well for themselves especially in the more sportier car version of cars i mean especially with the 570s and the stuff like that i just can't wait to see what the this um the 720s that's going to replace the super sport 650s is going to be like and what they'll do with that i mean they're going to make incredible cars from that range and i can't wait to see the um 
the Hyper GT. That's going to be absolutely incredible. So let's move on to Porsche. I think I covered most of what I wanted to talking about McLaren. Um, just let me know what else you think in the comments. And yeah, let's move on to Porsche. Absolutely incredible car company. We all know this. I mean, people say they all look the same, but I beg to differ. <laughs> I mean, they've come out with legends like the 959, the CGT, the Porsche 918 Spider, the GT TRS, the GT3 RS, the whole GT3 line, the whole GT line is absolutely incredible what they're known for. And let's get into it. For the most part, in for the most part in all Porsche models, they use a they have used a flat six or a twin turbo flat six to produce from around like 300 horsepower to I think the most it's produced is well over 500 maybe 600 horsepower in like the turbo s's and stuff like that and in the gt3 rs it produces around 500 horsepower absolutely insane and the thing is they've been doing this same thing for so many years just perfecting on something that's supposed to not work like this type of style the um, rear mounted engine is supposed to be not very well in any circumstance and they've just kept working at it and making it one of the best driver's cars you can buy the gt3 even the boxster is an absolutely incredible car just to whip around because it's been perfected so much i mean the german engineering is absolutely incredible i think throughout the years how much they perfected something that's imperfect to hate on porsche is just absolutely ridiculous i mean all their cars i think are just beautiful from the Cayman, the new one, the new uh, 718 Cayman is absolutely beautiful to the, the GT4, the GT3 RS, I'm absolutely in love with the massive wings, the 4.0 GT3 RS, the 3.8 GT3 RS, absolutely incredible cars, and they hold their value so well, they don't depreciate, um, the CGT, absolutely incredible, the V10, I mean, <sighs> All their cars have been absolutely incredible. I mean, with the new 2017 911s, like the reviewers thought it was going to be absolutely horrible because they're implementing those uh, small turbos onto the flat six, and they just come out saying that it's one of the best cars ever driven. I mean, Ferrari kind of did the same thing with the 488. Like everybody thought, oh, it's not naturally aspirated, it's going to ruin everything, and they come out saying otherwise. I mean, you're not going to put out a product that's not good. And I think these um, reviewers are seeing that like, oh, even though like we're purists and we want w what we thought was great 10 years ago, what they're putting out now is still absolutely incredible. I still go back and look at Porsches that I see driving on the road from the 80s and 90s, early 2000s, not much early 2000s, but like the 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, these are beautiful cars. I mean, I love the classic Porsche design. And then I look at uh, models from 2010, 2015, um, beautiful cars all around. Like I go back and look like, look at early Ferraris and I, I'm not much of a fan, but early Porsches, since they've carried the same type of design throughout the years, I mean, there's not much to complain about because they all look the same, but they're all different in their own way. To get out as a whole is Porsche has perfected something over the years to make it perfect, to make a perfect formula that you can put out in every single car. And I think, like I said in the beginning, like McLaren is trying to replicate that type of style. They're trying to take that perfect twin turbo V8 and make it perfect. I didn't mean to say it's perfect already, but from the 12C to the McLaren P1, they've done amazing things. And from the early Porsches using that flat six to the GT3 RS that we see today, it's an absolutely incredible, incredible system that they've perfected throughout the ages. So yeah, what do you guys think about my take on McLaren and Porsche's similarities? I mean, two of my favorite companies right now, I mean, 
other than Lamborghini and Ferrari, they have their own way. I'll probably talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, McLaren and Porsche, what do you think about these two companies? Just drop a comment below, like the video, share it, subscribe, and yeah, I will catch you in the next video.